Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about controlled rollout with React Native and feature flags. So I'm Talia. I'm a developer advocate at Split and this is my contact information. I'm on Twitter. You can email me. Um, and I want to start off, I want to introduce you all to my friend, Debbie the web developer. And Debbie is a web developer who has spent most of her career doing JavaScript development, mostly with React, um, but all mostly front end as well. And Debbie recently just joined a mobile team that uses React Native. Um, so she gets assigned her first feature and she writes the React Native code and she gets it reviewed and she tests it and she pushes it to production and the new version gets uploaded to the App Store, but then something really bad happens. There's a problem with the code, and Debbie breaks the entire app. Oh no, what are we gonna do? So in order to fix this, Debbie has to release a fix to the App Store, but she has to wait two weeks to do it because of App Store regulations, and now Debbie is so worried that she's gonna lose her job. So this is Debbie's friend, John, and John is also a web developer on the team, um, and he also does mobile development. And he suggests that they use code push and that they use that to push out a new version without waiting for the App Store. And code push is a tool that you can use to dynamically update the experience to your React Native app. So, phew! Crisis averted, we're going to use code push, it's going to be great. So a few weeks later, Debbie is working on another feature that allows users to scan a barcode with their mobile device and then the barcode will find that specific item for them and tell them information about that item, um, product details and pricing and um, things like that. But lo and behold, Debbie releases this feature and it breaks the app again. Debbie, 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 what are we going to do with you? But Debbie is not worried because she thinks she can just use code push again. So Debbie and John do some digging and they realize that they can't use code push because the bug is in the React Native code that's accessing the camera. Now she really thinks she's going to get fired. So Debbie and John are talking about what they're going to do and how they're going to resolve this. They can't wait two weeks to fix um, the bug. They can't wait to, two weeks to release a fix to the App Store. So what are they going to do? They figure out this like really hacky solution in JavaScript where they temporarily disable the new feature while they're waiting for the new version to get released. And then all of a sudden, a mysterious stranger appears and points out to Debbie and John that that thing that you just did is called a feature flag. When you temporarily disabled that feature, um, you're basically using a feature flag. And Debbie is so confused. She's like, what's a feature flag, Yoda? And Yoda explains that a feature flag lets you separate code deployment from feature release. And Yoda explains that feature flags provide this sort of safety net for your features. So what this means is that you can turn on and off features without a lengthy release process. So Debbie or Debbie's product owner or anyone on Debbie's team can turn on features or kill features with just the click of a button. So that means no one has to push up new code or revert code or um, you don't have to do anything code related um, to have this fix in or to have any new feature in. So you don't need a release process to make changes to your features. And with feature flags, you can target your internal teammates, test your code in production, and then release it. So Debbie can add herself and John and her other team members inside of the feature flag, keep the default off for the rest of the world, and test her code in production without affecting end users. Then there's all these other safety nets with controlled rollouts. And Yoda explains that with controlled rollouts, you can release new features gradually 
ensuring a really good user experience for a small group of users before you release them to your entire user base. So this means that Debbie's team can control um, the rollout for her barcode feature and she can roll out the barcode feature to 5% of their users to make sure it works. And if there's any other bugs, that they can roll the feature back. And another thing they can do is they can A-B test to see whether or not users who have the feature spend more money on the app or um, how it affects um, iOS users versus Android users, like what's the performance difference. So with feature flags, you're getting this extra layer of risk mitigation in case something goes wrong. And Yoda advises them to use controlled rollouts next time they roll out a new feature. And that's exactly what Debbie and John do. So in the future, whenever they released a feature, they used controlled rollouts to mitigate the risk in case there was a bug. And they took Yoda's advice and they started using feature flags to do controlled rollouts. So all they did is go into the feature flag configuration page, and this is what, what it looks like in split, um, and they set what's called targeting rules. And targeting rules really just define who sees a feature and who does not. And here, Debbie and John are saying that they want 5% of their users to see this new barcode feature, and the remaining 95% are going to see the existing or default behavior. And then as Debbie and John's confidence increases in the barcode feature and they know that it's working for more and more users, they can slowly move this to have 100% allocation to their user base. So now Debbie and John are as happy as can be because they have this new process for mobile controlled rollout with an extra layer of risk mitigation through feature flags and it works really well for them and their confidence is high and their developer velocity increases because of this new process with feature flags. But there's always these naysayers and these negative Nancys and um, in our case this grumpy old dev, this grumpy old developer. So this grumpy old dev comes in and he starts being really negative and he goes up to Debbie and John and he says hey your plan only works when you have a strong network connection because you need to pull the current feature flag status from the server. But when you're doing this with mobile development, what happens when you don't have a strong network and you can't load the feature flag configuration? What do you do then? And Debbie and John are like, you know what, grumpy old developer, you don't scare us. We use caching. Um, Debbie and John use Split for feature flag development and with Split's updated caching feature, they can cache their feature flag data so that all of their mobile users now have access to the personalized experience wherever they are regardless of their data connection. So Debbie draws out this diagram and talks Grumpy Dev through it. So basically they need a way to get the feature flag configuration from the feature flag system, which is Split, um, to the phone. And what do you do if there is no connection and you can't connect to the feature flagging system? You look at the cache. So by automatically caching feature flags and pulling updates for those, for those flags every 15 minutes, your newest changes will be reflected to your users regardless of their connectivity at the time that they run your application. And so what's great about this is that the data refreshes every 15 minutes automatically and there's no human intervention needed and there's no extra code that's needed and this is really great for connectivity issues. So Android and iOS caching and mobile caching, um, this allows flags that control exposure to your new features, improvements and bug fixes to be regularly updated and stored in the cache for instances when connectivity might not be available. And so by caching your app data locally on each device, you allow your end user to have access to all of the functionality, even when they don't have internet access. And this is really important for mobile development, especially with React Native. And it's really great for users who travel internationally or who always don't have great network connection or who are frequently outside of their data service area. 
Um, it also speeds up the load time in areas where connectivity is limited because the app can load from the cache while awaiting updates from a slower moving data connection. And then grumpy old dev says, okay, fine, fine, fine. You got me there, but Apple will reject your app because um, if you keep making changes more than two weeks, more frequently than two weeks, it's against App Store regulation. So you're not gonna be able to, to do this. And um, Debbie and John just smirk and they're like, hey, Uber has thousands of feature flags in their iOS code base. And if Uber can do it, so can we. Um, but in all seriousness, a lot of apps use this technique and Uber even published an academic paper on this. And if it's good enough for Uber, it's good enough for us. So Debbie and John have defeated grumpy old dev and they continue to use um, controlled mobile rollouts with feature flags. And again, this process has increased the entire team's developer velocity and they spend more time creating new features and less time with bugs and defects because they find these bugs and defects earlier in the process, which also saves the team money because the earlier you find problems, the cheaper it is to fix. So let's talk about React Native and how this is done in the code. So you might be wondering how Debbie uses feature flags for for real in React Native. What does she do? How did Debbie do this and how was it implemented? So in Debbie's React component, she adds the split treatments component, which is given to you in split in our SDK, and it returns the, the proper treatments based on the name's prop value that we pass to it. So the name of the feature flag here is enable barcode sh uh, shopping. And all she does is wrap the feature with the split treatments component, and then the code inside of that will, um, will then know whether the feature, the show barcode experience, is on or off for the current user. So based on the targeting rules and the treatment rules that you put inside of your configuration in the UI, um, split will know if the treatment is on or off for the current user. And if the flag is on for the user, they're able to see the barcode, and if the flag is off, they won't get the barcode experience. So this is how you can control um, your user's experience without pushing up new code. So as long as Debbie has this split treatments in her, um, in her render component, then in the split UI, she can say, I want only our internal users to be able to initially see this feature, and then I'm gonna test it in production, and then I'm gonna roll it out to everyone. Or she can say, um, I only want people who are in this region or with this device type to be able to see the feature, and then anyone else who's not in that region or has that device type is not gonna be able to see um, or experience this new barcode um, barcode feature. So basically everything can be configured in the split UI. Um, and what's great about it is, again, you don't have to touch any source code to make these changes and you don't have to touch any, um, you don't have to use GitHub to push up any new code. Everything is done in the split UI. So I just want to thank everyone for listening. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to get feedback from you on controlled rollouts or feature flags, like what are the, the use cases that you use? Um, you can tweet me and e or email me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or talk about this in more detail. Um, but thank you again, and I hope that you all have a great day from the cache while awaiting updates from a slower moving data connection. And then grumpy old dev says, okay, fine, fine, fine. You got me there, but Apple will reject your app because um, if you keep making changes more than two weeks, more frequently than two weeks, it's against App Store regulation. So you're not gonna be able to, to do this. And um, Debbie and John just smirk and they're like, hey, Uber has thousands of feature flags in their iOS code base, 
And if Uber can do it, so can we. Um, but in all seriousness, a lot of apps use this technique, and Uber even published an academic paper on this. And if it's good enough for Uber, it's good enough for us. So Debbie and John have defeated grumpy old Dev, and they continue to use um, controlled mobile rollouts with feature flags. And again, this process has increased the entire team's developer velocity, and they spend more time creating new features and less time with bugs and defects because they find these bugs and defects earlier in the process, which also saves the team money because the earlier you find problems, the cheaper it is to fix. So let's talk about React Native and how this is done in the code. So you might be wondering how Debbie uses feature flags for, for real in React Native. What does she do? How did Debbie do this and how was it implemented? So in Debbie's React component, she adds the split treatments component, which is given to you in split in our SDK, and it returns the the proper treatments based on the name's prop value that we pass to it. So the name of the feature flag here is enable barcode sh uh, shopping. And all she does is wrap the feature with the split treatments component. And then the code inside of that will, um, will then know whether the feature, the show barcode experience, is on or off for the current user. So based on the targeting rules and the treatment rules that you put inside of your configuration in the UI, um, Split will know if the treatment is on or off for the current user. And if the flag is on for the user, they're able to see the barcode. And if the flag is off, they won't get the barcode experience. So this is how you can control um, your user's experience without pushing up new code. So as long as Debbie has this Split treatments in her um, in her render component, then in the split UI, she can say, I want only our internal users to be able to initially see this feature, and then I'm going to test it in production, and then I'm going to roll it out to everyone. Or she can say, um, I only want people who are in this region or with this device type to be able to see the feature. And then anyone else who's not in that region or has that device type is not going to be able to see um, or experience this new barcode, um, barcode feature. So basically, everything can be configured in the split UI. Um, and what's great about it is, again, you don't have to touch any source code to make these changes, and you don't have to touch any um, you don't have to use GitHub to push up any new code. Everything is done in the split UI. So I just want to thank everyone for listening. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to get feedback from you on controlled rollouts or feature flags, like what are the, the use cases that you use. Um, you can tweet me and e or email me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or talk about this in more detail. Um, but thank you again, and I hope that you all have a great day.